Hey everybody and happy March! I hope that this mic is working. I'm using my nice new camera, which I've been like weirdly scared to use, but I really wanted to use it for this whole video. So hopefully I'm doing it right. I this week wanted to do a favorites video and talk about the month of March. I've never made a favorites video before. I watched so many of them, but I feel like March is kind of this special month that can also be a challenge for people. I figured I would talk about some of my favorite things about March in general, and also just talk about some of my favorite things right Right now. March has a special sort of energy that is unlike any other part of the year. Here in the Midwest, March can be really difficult for a lot of people. When I was younger, I always struggled with this month because it just felt like the winter was dragging on and everything felt dead and brown and gray. But now I look around and I see so many magical moments happening all around me at this time of year. And I've learned to really appreciate and even look forward to the tension between winter relinquishing its hold on the earth and spring slowly coming into view. March has St. Patty's Day, which is one of my favorite holidays to celebrate. Brian and I are both Irish, and we got to spend St. Patty's in Ireland a few years ago. Now, around this time of year, I crave long walks in chilly wind and cherishing those small little moments of warmth and sun that pop up here and there. Right after St. Patty's is the spring equinox, where we can finally say goodbye to winter. This year, Easter falls in the month of March. This feels too early for me, but mostly because I love Easter decor and I want to be able to keep it up all of April. Instead, this year, I'm giving myself an early swap from winter decor to Easter decor. I'm really attracted to Easter shit. All the stuff that's originating from Ostara and pagan rituals, which, you know, are all based on the changing natural world. So it's no wonder that we want to start surrounding ourselves with things that represent new life, like eggs and baby bunnies and flowers and soft colors. These are all part of the natural cycle going on around us. That's what sets this time of year apart from the heart of winter or the heart of spring. It's this special in between between that deserves its time in the sun. Okay, let's talk favorites. Lately, I'm craving a very certain flavor profile that I always seem to crave this time of year, which is lemon, garlic, and basil. Give me a little lemon, garlic, basil treat and maybe slap some capers, maybe a little hot sauce on top, and I'll just be so happy. The other night, I made my spinach, basil, lemon pasta dish and added some asparagus, and I cannot stop thinking about it. I wanna eat it at every meal. I made a video for this recipe, so I'll link that below. Asparagus is in season now, so if you absolutely love it like I do, now is the time to get the freshest possible asparagus you can find at the grocery store. My current favorite video game, outside of Animal Crossing of course, is Cozy Grove. It's similar to Animal Crossing in a bunch of ways, but it's also very different. It's easy and cozy and low stakes. You're just a little cutie living on an island, helping the sweet little animal spirits that haunt it. And they give you these easy little tasks, usually just looking for hidden objects. And also you have these little pets that you feed. It's so sweet. Oh, no, this is dangerous. As I mentioned last year in my Jane Austen recommendations video, this is my absolute favorite time of year to jump back into some Austen. Whether it's books or movies, I find so much comfort in Jane Austen's stories. The reason I like revisiting her this time of year is because the stories are all set in England, of course, and I have an easier time coping with some of the gray cold days of March when I imagine that I'm experiencing a gray cold day in Regency England. There are also a lot of indoor scenes in Austen novels and not a lot of thorough descriptions of weather so it feels kind of like neutral ground. You can watch my video all about Jane Austen if you want further recommendations as to where to start, so I'll leave the link below. Right now, we're watching Call the Midwife on Netflix, which I know, the show has been around forever and everyone loves it. We are late to the game, but I'm having the sweetest, most heartwarming time watching through this show with Brian right now. It's just a show that follows the stories of a group of midwives in the 1950s. We cry at almost every episode, but mostly those are happy tears. It's also set in England, and they're always wearing these jackets and cute 1950s period clothing that fits well with the vibes of March in the Midwest. All right, let's talk about books. I'm about to show you my entire TBR list for this spring. I'm sure I'll read six or seven of these books in the month of March. I figured I'd show you all of them. The reason I chose these books for spring is because anytime somebody recommends me a book, I usually go, okay, what season should I read it in? And my friends who are used to that by now have an answer ready for me. Like few of these are recommendations from Alyssa, Megan Zimmerman, and they told me specifically to read them in spring. Now these are books I haven't read yet, so I can't really tell you anything about them or recommend them in any way. I will say Demon Copperhead, I've heard, is really bleak, 
really dark. A lot of people had trouble finishing it because kind of nothing good happens in it for a lot of it. So I know that going in, I'm nervous, but I still want to read it because it's also supposed to be just an incredible book. But if you're not really in the mood to read David Copperfield retold through the lens of the opioid crisis, then maybe just cross that one off your list. I'm also currently reading The Secret Book of Flora Lee. I'm only like an hour or two into the audiobook and I'm already having a lot of fun. It's a historical fiction about sisters living in England. There's a little bit of World War II in there, but there's also a mystery surrounding one of the sisters. So if that sounds fun to you, I'm having fun reading it right now. Also, these last five books on my TBR list are all from a YouTube video I watched. There's a vlogger named Darling Desi and she had a vlog all about spring book recommendations and I watched it and I was like, you know what? Her and I have very similar tastes when it comes to what we want out of our spring reads. So I'm hoping that these books deliver. I've never read any of her recommendations before. I don't know if we have really the same taste. A few of these are kind of like set in the Regency era. They're kind of an extension of that Jane Austen want that I have around this time of year. So I'm hoping that those are good. And then she described Flower Heart as being like a Studio Ghibli movie in a book. And I was like, okay. I'll give it a try. I looked on Goodreads and it didn't have that great a rating, so I don't know. I don't know if this could be good. If you want recommendations for books that are for sure good, that I liked anyway, in my last video I talked about some books that I've been reading recently or just finished. I actually think they work great as March books, especially the two cozy Irish books I read because March is St. Patty's month, so you might as well transport yourself to Ireland. So usually favorites videos have a lot of products in them. I'm trying not to buy too much stuff anymore. However, I do have two products to share. Brian took my family to Lincoln Square when they were visiting a couple weeks ago. Him and my dad brought me back a candle from Mertz's Apothecary. It is the Archipelago Luna candle. Can you see this? That's why they got it for me because it was called Luna. Little did they know it's one of my favorite smells which is lemon, lavender, and thyme all together. I mix those smells using just essential oils all the time and use that as like a perfume substitute. Having them all in a candle is amazing and this candle freaking lasts. I light it every night sometimes for like five or six hours and it's still not dead yet and it's been like a week and a half since my parents were here and they got me this candle. Also, when I go upstairs into our bedroom, I can still smell the candle up there even though the candle lives in our living room. I can't tell you enough about this candle. So I made us go back to Mertz's and I got two more. But I looked online to see if I could share a link and guess what? They sell this shit on Amazon. So if you can't get to Mertz's Apothecary, and buy a candle for $14, you can get a giant one on Amazon. They have like the big glass ones for like $24, which, you know, that's a lot, but candles are so expensive these days. 14 seemed okay to me, knowing how long it lasts. Okay, and then the only other product I have, wait, this is my other favorite thing right now, and I know I already shared these in recent vlogs, but I they're my favorite things is the sticker sheets I got from Etsy. And the two companies I wanna share about are Artimation 1104 and then Morenkunst, which apparently means something, oh, something carrot. Are y'all mad at me that I didn't retain this information? Something carrot. Look at these freaking stickers. I use them on my journal. And every single day when I get to pick a sticker for my journal, I get so freaking happy. Oh my God. Those are the two companies on Etsy that I wanted to recommend. Hopefully this was fun. Was this fun? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments <laughs> if you struggle with March the way that I used to. I love it now. It's one of my favorite months, which is why I struggled with February because it felt like March. And I was like, no, I have to save these feelings for when it really is March and I can feel that special feeling and celebrate it then. Have a happy week. See you next week.